Look like we are on. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to this Facebook live session. Man, I had some technical difficulties for a moment. Microphone wouldn't work. Just typical, you know, it's all good. It's Wednesday evening. I got myself a beer, so I'm good. I hope you're doing well. I hope that you're up for another absolute beginner for Fusion 360. What we're doing here is anybody who have any questions, just fire them off and we will stop what we're doing and we will answer any of those questions. That's how we roll here on Facebook. Just slow and easy. There's no crazy questions. It's just you and I. Let's make sure that Fusion uh, works good for you. I got a question um, from, from one, per, one of you guys who asked me, how to model up something like a GoPro uh, connecting thing, like somewhat like a clip like, like this. So this is what we're gonna model up uh, tonight. We're gonna have some uh, fun with some, uh, some good sketching. So uh, I hope that, uh, that you're in for that. I hope this didn't get too far into, into your face when I held it up like this. So what I did was, I kind of grabbed a pair of my verniers. I uh, made myself a little sticky note with some of the dimensions on it, just so we had something to go for. But of course, this is not so much about making uh, this perfect. It's more about getting into Fusion 360 and kind of like maybe learning some some tips and, tips and tricks as we are going along. Again, any questions you guys have? You guys have? I can see we got Rob uh, Robert in here. We got David in here. Raul, good to see you. Uh, Yosef, thank you so much for taking the time to join. Any questions, throw them in there. Okay, so um, I like to start with the default option for Fusion 360 uh, when, we, uh, when we start out with these absolute beginners here on Facebook. And again, any questions you have, throw them in the comment area. We'll answer them just as we're, go as we're going through. There's no, uh, you know, like the live streams on YouTube where I wait to the end. Uh, here we're just gonna stop so a couple of things that I normally like to do first of all I'm really not a big fan of this grid so you can go right down here to grids and snaps and you can turn off the layout grid and you will see that the grid kind of like goes away you can also turn snap to grid off so when you're sketching you're not snapping into anything too that can be kind of nice now of course you can control the grids uh, settings uh, in here either as adaptive or as fixed where you're literally putting in the grid settings. But generally, I like to go in, whoops, to the grid settings, turn off layout grid, snap to grid, I normally turn off when it starts annoying me that it's snapping to, to the grid. Uh, another thing I like to do is going up here on the view cube, up to the left, right click, and I change to perspective with auto faces on. That is the changes that I do. So just right click up here, perspective with all the faces. Um, that's the things that I normally change when I when I load up Fusion uh, 360. And all this should stick. So when you've done it once, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't have to do it again. Okay, so let's get into a uh, model some things with uh, with Fusion here. So uh, you know some of you guys maybe have GoPros, uh, so you're familiar with these things. Some of you guys maybe don't. Uh, so this kind of holder here, the way that GoPros actually works is that there's kind of like a fork that goes in in those two areas here. So this is kind of like the high precision area here. Now we are going to model up um, kind of like somewhat similar to this snapping thing. So this is kind of like you can squeeze together to unlock. Um, but I'm pretty sure that the person that I was looking for was more looking at how do you kind of like model the top portion up because you could always you know, then kind of like figure out how you want to do your own bottom. If you want to uh, put it on a bicycle, you know, handle or, or something, something like that. So let's, let's get into it. Now, the first problem or the first challenge you always have when you're trying to model something up um, is always where the heck to start. You know that you want to end up with a model that looks like something uh, like this part. Um, I'm trying to look at the screen to make sure I show you from you so as many 
positions as possible. Um, you know what you're going to end up with. It's going to look like this, but how the heck do you get there? That can be uh, a little frustrating. Um, I think that you should either look at the most important part, what in this case would be kind of like this area right here, where that fork kind of like goes in and swirls around. Um, so either the most important area or maybe also the most difficult area can sometimes be, be the best to get the heck out of the way. And I want to start with that here um, because I think that there's a lot of good sketching uh, techniques uh, with this part. So we're going to start with kind of like drawing up this portion and we'll show you a couple of uh, tips to, uh, for that. Now, trying to measure all this up uh, with a pair of, of, of calibers like this, uh, you know, trying to measure each of these different kind of like features. Um, you know, if you have to reverse engineer something, you many times have to do that. Uh, but we're going to cheat a little bit. What I did was I grabbed my cell phone and I snapped a picture of it from kind of at the top. And we're going to use that as our reference. Enough of this. So to get using a picture as a reference, what you will do is you will go to... Uh, to the attached canvas up here, this button up here, and you can bring in that picture. Now, let me just open up that picture for a second, uh, just so you can you can see it uh, without being inside of Fusion 360. Uh, just bear with me a second. I think it was this one here. So here you can kind of like see what I snapped with my, my phone. I just snapped kind of like the top of the picture. Actually, this is kind of like not a great picture. Look at the shadows. Uh, I pulled in. I mean, this is just me with my with my phone, uh, not trying to be to be too too fancy. You could probably go out on the web on the web and find a better picture uh, out there. I see we got a couple of questions. Um, yeah, sure. Just just show. Just ask any any questions you have. Um, I might not going to answer something too crazy uh, in 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 you know going off topics too much, but we'll definitely you know. Any questions you have? So, uh, question is, do you have a short answer to how to do 2D cam uh, on a curved sheet? Uh, model airplanes have normally two curved sheets of bells to form the fuselage. Is, uh, is this a sheet metal thing? Um, so for cam, you could use uh, the trace tool path. I'm gonna come back into what we were talking about before. Um, the trace toolpath is a 2D toolpath that will actually follow a line uh, in, in an angle. But don't forget that in Fusion, you do have all the 3D toolpath in here. So it's only if your machine can't handle, uh, you know, curved that you will do that. You can also, I'm going to put my email address right in here. You can also send me an email uh, and I'll take a look at it uh, probably not till tomorrow. But if you can send me like a picture or something like that, will make it a lot, uh, a lot easier. All right. Um, all right. So simulation, David. Yeah, we could possibly go in and take a look at that. Isaac is here. Good to see you. All right. Let's get into uh, to this part here. So I'm going to select that picture. Um, so I'm going to select attach canvas. What's going to bring that picture in uh, to uh, Fusion? The first thing it's asking me to is select the face. So I want to know where it's going to place um, that picture on what face you want to place that picture on. I'm going to place the top here because we're kind of like looking uh, from the top and down, right? Uh, so I'm going to select that top plane here. And then it asks me to select the picture. When I click on the little picture icon, you will see I actually snapped a couple of other pictures of it. But we're just going to use that one picture I just showed you. Um, when I place it here... Um, you will see that size is very relative at this point. And uh, that's because it's all pixelated. We're going to take care of that in a second. Um, you will also see we have an opacity chart. So you can actually, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm roll the middle mouse button. It's going to zoom in. You can control the opacity, opacity level of the picture. And you can turn this on and off if you want to. Um, 50 to me is normally a good place to start, I think. And I'm actually just going to, right now, I'm actually just going to hit OK and leave it uh, where it is. Let me go to the top view up here in the view cube. Just left click, look at it from the top so we can kind of like see it here. Um, now, so this picture is just thrown on our, on our screen. It's not to size. We don't really know where it, it is really located other than on that 
top plane. So I'm going to go up here and click on my origin, and that will show the origin right here. So I probably want it to be in relationship to that. But another thing I want to do is I want it to get to the right scale. Now, if I hit the little arrow next to the canvas, you will see that that image that we brought in is kind of like displayed right here in the tree. If I right click on it, um, there's two things I'm using in here. You either use edit canvas or it'll bring us right back to that dialog box we just, we just saw. Nothing too fancy about that. Um, and the other one, if I right click on, is calibrate. Now, calibrate will let us actually scale the image up to what we think it would be. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, click calibrate and move over. And you see kind of like how I get a crosshair for my mouse. And I mean, here, the closer you get, the better. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to just left click once and it kind of like creates a little green point. I'm going to roll the middle mouse button to zoom out. And then I'm going to come down to the farthest away down here, kind of like right around here. And I'm going to click again. And you will see that I get a, a dimension up here, a value of that line. Um, now, right now, it's 7.65 uh, sitting up here. Um, if I type in 46 millimeters, because that's actually the length, 46 millimeters, and I hit enter, you'll see this, <laughs> the image just pump right to your face uh, because now it actually is, it is to, to size. This is the size that we, we want that uh, when I before measured um, with my calibers, when I before measured across here, I got uh, that 40, 46. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to be a little bit concerned about where I'm placing this um, and I think it's a good practice to do the origin either, and, and to move that, we can right click and go into that edit canvas. So now that bring that menu up again. If you click on the little rectangle here, you can kind of like move the image around compared to the origin. And you should probably place it either right, let me zoom out a little, either so the origin is like right on the center of where that P is, or you could also do it, uh, where this the top of the round piece maybe the most important thing right around here like kind of like saying this is the origin of the part because we're going to have some dimensions going uh, around this also another thing i want to show you we could actually also take this image and we could completely turn it around so just so you know that you have kind of like a full flexibility with these different handles test that out play with them okay i'm gonna hit okay and then we now place kind of like a picture where we want it now we are going to start um, start drawing kind of like this profile up. Now, if you're fairly new to Fusion, this profile might look a little complicated to start out with. What I would recommend you do is just use lines to start with, and then we will kind of like handle some of the other uh, issues as, we, as we're going along. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the line tool, and I'm gonna select right on this plane because that's where I wanna start my first sketch. And of course, you see how it's spun around. You can go up and you can rotate up on these arrows. See up in the upper right corner how I have the different arrows up here. If you click on one of them, you can kind of like rotate the image around. Just so if you wanna get it in a certain certain way. I wanna like this. Okay, start my first line. So I'm gonna make sure I start at the origin. Let it snap into the origin. I'm gonna left mouse click and I'm just gonna drag a line out two and this is about how precise you want to kind of like get uh, out to about here i'm going to left click again i get another line and i'm literally just kind of like going to go around and and sketch something that is pretty i would say pretty crude compared to to what we're going to end up with uh in the end but it looks like that there might be a little bit of an angle here and then that definitely is a big radius we're probably going to use what is called a spline for this area so i'm actually just going to kind of like go around the outside a little bit here um not worry too much about that area around here then i'm going to come a little bit close back in again now i'm kind of like following the path again just uh with straight lines right you can kind of like see how i'm kind of like just tracing the picture here I kind of like have a knot in the way here, but I'm going to assume that it's going to go 
about down to you can see on the other side so it actually looks like it maybe goes down to about here i'm going to go over a little bit and then it looks like this area is a one big kind of like spline curve too so i'm going to wait with that one so i'm actually just going to sketch down a little bit and move over here and just make sure that i'm kind of like on the center right there and then close off by going up to the center again and as soon as you do that if i hide the image by left clicking over here um then you will see what we got but <laughs> it looks it looks a little brutal now we can see it's in close sketch because it kind of like get this um yellowish uh, color on and i'm going to turn the image back on again so we can kind of like see what we did see we got a question here how do i call my parameters that i created before when i created uh the dimensions yeah so we haven't really talked about parameters on these absolute beginner series but if you go up to a modified drop down and you go down to change parameters and you click on that that should bring back um all uh the parameters uh right in here um and um that you have saved with that file they only save with the files uh in there i actually don't think you can pull them in from from like a library why no splines oh we're going to come to the splines just in a second uh i just kind of like skip those uh just to um just to kind of like get the lines done here again this is kind of like absolute uh beginner series so i just wanted to make sure that you can kind of like take this uh in in steps yeah so now we're going to do uh, some splines because if we're looking up here on uh, on this area up here um, there's definitely we need to to create some splines up here but we kind of like gonna attach them to the line segment somewhat that we have uh, that we have created here so um, I'm gonna jump in and do uh, a spline so under the sketch drop down you will see spline is sitting down here now some people when they do splines thinks that the more spline points you add the better so what people will do is that they will go in here and they will kind of like keep on clicking 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 so kind of like try to follow this area around here um but it's not really it's very hard to control so actually the fewer spline points uh as possible but of course you need as many spline points as you can get. So I'm gonna snap one here to the end point, and then I'm gonna do one with about the first curve happen around here. I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna do another one about where that transition is to the next curve. And then I can actually move over and probably do one around here. And if I wanna do the whole thing, I could move all the way down here and kind of like trying to connect uh, down about here. Now I might want to go back a little bit, but just to show you uh, what what we're having here, I'm going to hit the green check mark right here. So here we have a spline. Um, now what we get with a spline is we're getting all these different handles that you can kind of like pull and twist in here. You can also grab the endpoints and kind of like drag an endpoint up here. Uh, you can actually also right click uh, on in here and uh, you can actually um, insert spline fit points in here too uh, if you want to so there's a lot of there's a lot of different things uh, you can do uh, with with these splines um, now I just went one step too far I think um, so what you want to kind of do is you kind of like want to work with these handles uh that the spline um i'm gonna make sure it snaps into that line there that we get so if i zoom in here uh, we actually kind of get this spline handle and if i either make it shorter or longer we'll kind of defend we'll kind of shape that spline curve you can kind of see that as i'm as i'm moving around here and splines can be definitely think that you maybe need to practice a little bit like in the beginning it can be a little it can be a little difficult to to get uh some some decent results with it um but a little bit of practice and uh and you definitely you you will definitely get uh get a good good hang of it so i'm gonna leave that there i think that that follows 
pretty good with that shadow. Now I said that there also was going to be one down here, uh, down here. So this one, um, I would actually only use two points. I'm going to go back and click uh, spline, and I will. I'm going to snap it in to. Uh, looks like we're going to have a radius uh, right here, or maybe. But I'm just going to snap it into this corner, snap it into down here. So only two points, but I get a. Uh, a handle for each and you'll see here that as I click on those I get those handles and I can kind of like shape that spline pretty well. I can see that uh, Matthew's here. Good to see you Matthew. Thank you so much for joining uh, the live stream today. So um, what we've kind of like done here is we added a couple of splines. Now we might would also use a spline up here to create this. We could also use uh, some fillets. So I'm going to leave that for right now. But what I do want to do is I want to get rid of these extra lines I kind of like created before. It's just kind of like to get me get me going. Of course, I can click on this line. I can hit the lead on my keyboard, and the line goes away. And I can again hit the lead on this keyboard, the lead on this keyboard. Now this one down here, I kind of like snap to it down here. You could either hold down your left mouse button, and you could actually we could drag that in until it kind of like locks into it, or you could also go over here to the sketch geometry. And you could trim it. So right down here in the drop down, you could actually trim this line uh, to right there. Now I'm going to do the same. I'm going to leave it on trim. And I could actually go down and trim this line and trim uh, this line here. Now let me turn off the, pic the, the picture right now. Um, and you will see that now it maybe looks a little bit more, a little bit more decent maybe uh, at, at this point. So... What I'm going to do is we're going to have to fully define, put some dimensions on the sketch. And this is why I was excited about doing this sketch here um, because it, it's a little complex. But what we need to do is we need to apply dimensions and constraints to make all the blue lines uh, black. Now, to do the splines, that's the only place where I will, uh, I will cheat. What I will do is I will click on the spline that we created here with all the spline handles. I will right click on it and I will fix it. Click the little lock here. That will lock the spline in uh, and it will kind of like turn green actually. Um, I'm going to go down and do the same thing to this uh, spline down here. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to fix it. Um, what that means is that that will not go anywhere where the rest of our shapes over here, when it's blue, if I just drag a corner here, you will see that we can completely change uh, this out here. So that's why we need to lock it down. We're going to lock it all down with dimensions. Um, and in this case here, I maybe don't even need my, my picture. I can just start adding some dimensions here. So I'm going to hit D for dimension. And I'm going to place the first one from the origin. And I'm going to kind of like go the same way somewhat around uh, we model this up. And I'm going to round them up to within a half a millimeter. And then we can take a look at how it kind of like looks on the picture afterwards. So I'm going to make this one 24.5. And you will see that that line turns black when we do that. It's locked down. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a thickness to this one here. And I'm just going to make that 7 for right now. You will see that now that line turns, turns black. And that's how we can kind of like go around. So see this line here is blue right now. If we select the origin and go up to here, and I'm going to make this one 15. Like I said, we can always adjust it later on. You will see that that turns black. Same thing, we're going to add a little bit of thickness to this part here. I'm going to make this one maybe 5. And I'm just going to go around and add some of these dimensions in. And now you could get fancy and try to do some of them without, but this is kind of like how I would prefer that to start out. Now this line here is going to be in an angle, right? So we can select this line and this line, and that will give us uh, an angle here. So let's make it, you know, 96. Okay. Now, moving over to this one over here, we can see that that's probably going to be an angle from here to here. So let's make that 135. That's probably going to be an angle from here to here. Let's make that 110. So I'm just kind of like trying right now to get it uh, somewhat close. I'm also going to create a dimension from this line to this line. Kind of like give us an overall there. Let's make that one 11. 
like that. Now look how this line is still blue. That is because it needs, and if you don't know, go in and grab an endpoint and kind of like trying to start to move uh, with your mouse and you can see what can move. So this one still needs some dimension from this point down to our origin here. Let's make that 16. So as you can see, I'm just really just walking around here, uh, applying some dimensions just to kind of like get this uh, somewhat uh, secured so they all turn black. And I did a video, uh, a live stream, talking about my biggest mistakes uh, in CAD. And one of my biggest mistakes one time was not to make sure that everything uh, gets fully defined. You will see now that everything have turned black, which means that now it is fully defined. Now let's turn our picture back on so we can take a look here. And this is maybe where we could go in and, and try to adjust some things. But you know what? I think it's pretty good. What I'm going to do with these sharp corners is just add some fillets. But I think, you know what? I think this is pretty, pretty good. Let's see. This one here, maybe we try to change that one to 12 and see if we can get a little bit. How does it look if it's 12? Well, that was too much. 11.5. Eh, you know, one half of the other kind of thing, right? Uh, maybe we wanted to move this one up a little bit. 17. Oh, that was much better, right? So that's how we can kind of like, we can dial it uh, somewhat somewhat in here. So this is, but this is only half of it, right? We, we need to do the other half. One of the great things in Fusion is to actually use what is called symmetry. So we can mirror this around. Now we can either choose to do it in the in the sketch environment. So under the sketch dropdown, we can either try to, to go in and mirror it, or we can do it after we make it a solid. In this case here, it's probably a little bit easier if we make it a solid. So I'm gonna hide my picture just by hitting the light bulb. I'm gonna hit Q on my keyboard. That is the press pull command. I'm gonna select that unit we have here, hold down shift, hold down middle mouse button, spin it around here, and we can now see that we can actually add this into 3D space. I'm gonna make it seven millimeters and hit okay. And uh, again, shift middle mouse button, and you can you can spin it around. We can kind of like see half of what we have uh, created here. So I'm pretty happy with this. This looks somewhat decent, we, at least on our way. Now to mirror this, I'm gonna go over and uh, click on the create because I'm not gonna do this as a sketch. That was on down, sitting down here. We're gonna do it as a create. I'm gonna select mirror. I'm gonna select that. And I know that when you're inside of Fusion and when you're beginning, you always, <laughs> you wanna get something in the screen and it's easy to rush. I really recommend that you slow down a little bit, especially if you're new. And I know that's kind of hard, so it's easy for me to say. But you will see in these menus, there is uh, some options in here. One of them is called faces. That means that I can mirror specific faces. Now this is a face, this is a face, this is a face. So I could go in here and start clicking on all these different faces in here if I want to. And you will see that it kind of like get populated in here. But if you hit the drop down, you actually see that there's some other options in here. I normally prefer features. Now, what is a feature? A feature is the stuff that we have created down here. So if I select on our extrusion that is showing right down here, then that means I've selected the whole thing. Makes it a lot easier. Now, we're gonna mirror it over a plane. I'm gonna hold down shift and middle mouse button, spin it around here. Um, this here could be a plane, it could actually also be a face. So let's select on the mirror plane and let's just select on this plane right here and, uh, and hit OK, and you will see that we get uh, the second side. And if we turn our picture back on, let me right click and hit Edit Canvas so we can turn up the opacity. So now maybe we can see it a little bit better and I'll spin it around. I think we are, we are fairly close, right? It looks somewhat, somewhat decent here. Let me hide the the image here for a second. Now, one of the things you will see that I get here is I actually get um, a line cutting right across. Uh, and this is almost to the brink of being a little advanced, but 
keep an eye on your bodies folder up here you would actually see that i ended up with with two bodies because the first one before i did the mirror let me just roll back this is one body and then I mirror across and the way it was mirrored across here it turned it into two bodies this can happen when you're modeling around that you get multiple bodies what you can do is because these two actually touches each other we can go in here and we can click combine it means we can take two bodies select the two bodies make sure it's on join hit OK and now we have one one big body uh, and a mirror of one of another. I'm gonna turn the, the and you see we only got one body right now, and uh, you can see here that we can turn the eye light on so we don't see the origin. So that was kind of like the base uh, modeled up here with some few different techniques uh, that I definitely hope uh, definitely was, was useful. Most important thing when you're sketching up, make sure you get those sketches fully defined, okay. All right, oh, quick question, do that again? Yes, so uh, the combine tool, it's sitting up underneath um, in the modify tool here, and I've used a couple of live streams too on YouTube. Uh, if you want to know more about it, Sergio, send me an email and I can send you a couple of, the, um, of videos on using it. So pretty much what I did was, if I roll back before it, you can see how I get a line here, and it actually shows me in the body fold that I have two bodies, right? So you executing that combined command, let me select the two bodies and kind of like melt them together into, into to one body, uh, just like that. Now, a couple of things that I want to do to this that we didn't do before was we got to add some fillets, uh, like I said before. And, um, you know, you could follow the picture and try to see if we can get close with the different fillets on the different shout corners. But I think what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to add kind of like what I think is the aesthetic ones. Now, the fillet is sitting right up here in the drop down. You can hit fillet here or you can hit F. Hit the fillet here and I can now select this edge. Hold on, shift, middle, mouse button, roll around. Maybe select the edge on the other side. And if I grab that little arrow, you can now see, let me just spin around so we can see it a little bit better. You can now see how I'm adding a fill is to this. So we can kind of like find out what will be a, a good fill that we want uh, on this part here. And of course, I would probably go around and do this to, to most of, uh, of the different edges. So we're going to fill it and uh, you can start selecting multiple edges. We select these four here, shift, roll around, select the same four on the other side, just like this. Um, and again, find out what kind of fillet we, we want to add in here. Um, and like I said, I will probably go around, do that on, on every single uh, shot corner. Also add the fillets uh, down here. Right, so we get kind of like added some, some nice fillets to it. All right, uh, question, do I lose the mirror function when you combine? Uh, no, you, you don't, well, yeah, so I could have, I could have filled it before I did the mirror. That would have saved me a few clicks. If all these fillers have done before uh, I did the mirror down, if I'd done it down here, then I didn't have to click on each side, or maybe I made more, more sense. Now, in Fusion, um, everything is history-based, so it's following the path down here so the mirror uh you could say that the combine overruled the mirror but the mirror is still here like if i roll back here now the mirror is back so one of the things that is great about fusion is it's true history uh everything kind of like follows this history tree down here all right i want to say that that's enough of uh of this uh kind of shape here uh so what we have kind of like accomplished so far is somewhat the base the base portion of here what we're going to do now is kind of like this oval area here you see that it kind of like has actually has a nut sitting in here so we're going to have to make a little cut out for that so we're kind of like going to make this shape and then we are going to uh to cut in the slots here for kind of like that rotating thing to sit in there so 
What we're going to do is um, we're actually going to turn the origin back on. And, and this is one of the things that can be kind of interesting if you're fairly new. So like I said in my other absolute beginners, when you start sketching, there's only two places you can, you can sketch on. It's either a face or uh, a plane. So when we started out sketching all this bottom here, we started out on that top plane right here. Now to do uh, kind of like the, the, the round piece on top, uh, we will pick another plane. We'll pick like the side plane over here. So I'm going to open up a new sketch. Click here. And uh, you will see that I can't actually not select it right now because my solid is kind of in the way. Now there's two ways you can you can get to that front plane, side plane right there. You can either go to the origin, hit the little arrow, and you can actually find it over here. See how they highlight when I'm hover over them over here to the left. Look in the center of the screen and see how they kind of like highlight. So we could select the X, Y right here. Another trick is to actually move over where you want to select, but you can see we can't, it doesn't highlight, but hold down your left mouse button just for a second. And this little dialog box open up and now you'll see that that X, Y is sitting right there. So that's another way uh, to select it. Now, um, if we're looking at my little piece here on the side, you can see that it's pretty much all created up by a circle. So that's what I'm gonna start out with. Uh, I'm just gonna start out with a standard circle. So C for circle. And um, then I'm just gonna draw a circle here. I'm gonna draw this one 15 millimeters in diameter. Hit enter. Right, so there we have this, the, the sketch. Now notice how, it, how, black it, how blue it is, right? The reason it's blue is because it can move around here. Many times when I'm sketching things, I'm actually sketching a little bit over to the side. Now before when we tied most of that bottom down, we used the dimension tool. But of course you also have these constraints over here. So one you can use is the vertical constraint. If I click on the vertical constraint and I select the center of the circle and the center of this point, you will see that it actually goes down uh, horizontal. Now I actually wanted the vertical. Why did it go down horizontal? Let me just go up here and undo by clicking undo constraints. The reason that it went horizontal and not vertical is actually because I was closer to being horizontal than being vertical. Let me do the same thing where I'm closer to vertical over here. Click the horizontal vertical, do the same thing. And now you will see that it's vertical. So that's that's a little trick that you probably want to know about. So now when I place it here, if I, you see my cursor, I have that constraint icon. If I hit escape on my keyboard, I get my nice white cursor back. If I hold down the left mouse button and drag that circle, I cannot move it to the side because it now has that vertical constraint, but I can move it up and down. So let's add a, uh, a dimension to that. So I'm going to hit D for dimension. Now we're back to where we were before. And I'm going to click on this origin up to the center there. And uh, I'm going to make this 13, like this here. So what we have now, if I hold down shift and middle mouse button and I spin around, is we have a circle sitting right on that plane that we sketched on, that XY plane uh, right there. And uh, I'm actually going to I'm actually gonna go ahead and extrude this right now. So to extrude, we're going to hit Q. And that gives us the press pool. And I'm going to select that circle and you get that little arrow. And I always start just dragging the arrow. Now you will see that things turns red. The reason that it turns red is that the circle is interfering with the bottom base that we modeled up. And if Fusion sees that it's interfering, it automatically goes to a cut. But over here you can just click and you can switch it to what we want, which is a join. And just like that, we now have created uh, kind of like a, a solid piece. Now, I said before, keep an eye on these uh, small menus that you have over here. So right now it's going to one side. We could actually go in here and say we wanted symmetrical. And now when I drag in that arrow, you will see it's going to go uh, both ways. So that's a nice little, nice little tip there. Now I'm going to not make it go all the way out to the edge. I'm actually going to make it just a little thinner just like that, minus 11 is probably fine. Hit OK. And now we kind of got that uh, that round piece 
uh, sitting sitting right here. Now, this looks all right, I guess. Um, <laughs> but if you're looking at at the shape here, you will see that it's more like it's it's going more like in a in a nice curve. Uh, where if you look at the screen, it looks a little bit like I don't know a round pillow dropped down on on, on a floor here. That fill command we used before. Um, that thing is awesome. If I select this inner edge and I start pulling, uh, notice how we get a really nice fillet uh, coming coming out there, right? So we have an, a chance here to using the fillet tool, we can very easily modify this and make it look maybe a little bit more, I would say, aesthetic, just like just like that there. Okay, so now we kind of like got that that uh, overall shape uh, going through there. Dave is asking if we could use a uh, a side pick. Yes, absolutely. And I actually didn't have um, I didn't have one that I I kind of took a picture of uh, earlier that I was going to use, um, but then you know. Sometimes when you, if you're modeling this thing up, like the guy who asked me to do this to 3D print it, uh, you maybe want to kind of like play around with your with your own stuff, make your own changes to it. So I just decided not to do it. So now we got this here. Now there's a couple of things we have left to do on this part before we're going to call it the night. Um, one is we got to blast a hole through here and make room for the knot. And the other thing is we're kind of like going to create two um, open slots uh, on the side. So let's start by throwing a hole through here. So, so far we have kind of like started two sketches. We started one for the bottom, right, with the bottom plane. We started one for the circle here. Both of them we did on a plane. To create the hole, you could actually go ahead and uh, start a sketch right on this face. So if I click Create Sketch and I select right on this face, I can of course start uh, a sketch on here. Now I'm going to hit C for, for circle, and uh, you could go in here again, and you could draw your circle isla in here, uh, and you can see how I can pick up kind of like the, I don't know if this may be hard to see. I pick up the origin. You see how my cursor is across? Now it's a circle. Cross, circle, cross, circle. So that's how I know I can kind of like pick up that center there. I'm going to make a 5.5 a millimeter hole, hit enter. And I kind of like get that circle there. Now that one is black because it got a di it got a diameter and it's locked into the same circle as this one is, same center point. I'm gonna hit Q for press pull. I'm gonna select the inside of the circle. If I pull this way, it is going to be a solid. If I pull it this way, it is going to be a hole. And I prefer to go over here where it says extend and just say through all. That way I know the hole will always go through. Uh, the entire solid. So now if I hold down shift and middle mouse button, see we kind of like got a, got a hole through through that. Now to do the knot on this one here, uh, I'm actually going to do another sketch. So I'm going to click create sketch, select the same face as we selected before. And uh, this time, if you go down to the sketch, you'll actually see that you can select the polygon in here. And uh, if I select the, the polygon, uh, the polygon tool here, uh, you'll see, again, I can pick up that same center as before, and I can draw it up. Now, the six that you see right here is how many um, how many uh, um, faces we want. We want six. And then you will see we kind of like get the outside uh, diameter for that here. So let's make that five, just like that. Uh, now, this one is still tied into the center, but as you can see, it's still blue. Well, grab a corner and start moving your your mouse, and you can see why it's still blue. It was not rotation was not uh, controlled in this one. So one thing you could do was you could use the parallel constraint. So like this edge here, select the bottom edge here, and now it is black, right? Because now these two lines are parallel. And you can see it's shown with a uh, a little icon in here. I'm going to hit Q again and press um, this inside. 
and then hold down shift middle mouse button move it over a little bit and now we could kind of like make that a cutout for uh, for the knot here and we kind of get that uh, that in there okay last thing we got to do uh, to this part before we're gonna call it before we're gonna call it the night is we're gonna add these two slots in here this is where kind of like the the rotation is on the GoPro uh, kind of mount here so to do that I am gonna actually start a sketch on this face I could start it I guess it could start it on the on the plane that goes up through through the, the center here but just again to select the face I'm gonna select this face here so I'm gonna hit new sketch I'm gonna select that face right there and now you see we kind of like looking right through um, from from the side here now we could again mirror stuff across if if we want to but honestly I'm gonna be you know it's just two two rectangles so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a helping line though just to show me where the center is of the part I'm gonna open click line make sure it snaps to the audience go straight up here and and place a line that goes right straight up now what I'm gonna do now is when you're looking at a slot you're looking at this slot here it's actually kind of like two long rectangles right so um, we could go up and use the rectangle tool and we could just sketch like two rectangles and many times this is just about getting you getting you close and then you could start working with it from here so um, if I hit D for dimension I know there's gonna be 325 between the two 3.25 hit enter and you can see that now that happened that the one moved over now again uh, grab a corner and drag the mouse we can kind of like see what we still need to do so I also need to define the opening here um, that is also funny enough gonna be 325 the opening is so I'm gonna hit D for dimension select this one here make that 325 right so now these two are the same now this one also is gonna be 325 we could add another dimension Oh, if we go to the constraint and we scroll down we could select the equal um, equal sign on here all right I can see that uh, David is out of here good to see you David see you another time so with an equal constraint I can select this line here and this line and now these two lines are equal equal length what means that now this one here is is the same as, as over here so you kind of like get these uh, options in here so now if I start dragging over here you'll see that I'm kind of like dragging uh, these around now another thing we could do because we know this is going to be in the center we could hit D for dimension we could select this line and this line let me place the dimension down here you can actually do math in these so we could do 3.25 divided by 2 and now it's placed uh, in that direction okay so this is some of the, the the tricks we have in here now for the bottom down here um, to get these down here whoops to get these down here uh, and placed I might use something like the collinear constraint so if I select this line here and I select this line here you will see that that went down here if I select this line here and this line here these are now flush up here now to do the top ones you have a couple of options um, you could either just make sure that these are taller than what we are what we are cutting here so we could just go in here and say you know what I'm gonna be lazy and just give this a dimension make it 18 and I now know that I'm I'm free for this uh, there'll be one way you can do it but we also we really want kind of like these lines to just be flush with up here well this line up here is actually not a line uh, that is actually the top of the arc rolling around uh, so you cannot make these flush with this top line up here straight on but what you can do is you can use something called project to borrow an edge so if I hit P for project 
and I select this line, I actually get that endpoint where that, right where that top is. And now I can go back again and I can say I want to make a, you know, a constraint or between this one and this one and this one and this one. And now they're like flush right up there. So I kind of like borrowed this endpoint to be able to make that flush right there. Hold down shift, middle mouse button, spin it around, and we kind of like have two rectangles sitting out there in, uh, in space. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Q again, and we're going to select those two rectangles, and we're just going to drag it in. You see it turns red. That means it is a cut. Go say all the way through, and just hit OK. And now we have that slot going right through uh, that point right there. Okay, so I hope that this was useful in kind of like seeing how you can kind of like sketch uh, these different aspects of and how you can kind of like work with it um, to kind of like get you get you started with something something close to uh, a GoPro type of mount. At least this should hopefully get you uh, kind of like get you going in that direction. Guys, I hope this was useful. As always, this is being recorded, and I will also make sure that it gets up on uh, the YouTube channel um, probably over the, the weekend, so you can also see it up there. But for you guys who join me here on the Facebook live stream, really, really appreciate it. We do this on Wednesdays. We're not going to do it next Wednesday, because next Wednesday is Christmas, New Year's. So we're going to take a break next week, but we'll be back uh, the following week. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. As always, any questions, throw them in the question area, and we... Uh, We'll attack them there. So, with that, see if anybody got any of those questions. Last sip of my beer. Really appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you, Michael. Joseph, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. Robert, thank you so much. Merry Christmas. And um, they will be, um, we will do the YouTube live streams tomorrow. So, uh, tomorrow you can always catch us there. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are the best. See you next time.